IBM introduces PC Junior, a bright little addition to the family. Junior comes with bright computer ideas, like a keyboard that doesn't need a cord. You can get easy-to-use software like word processing, games and graphics your kids won't believe, plus a starting price you won't believe. And with easy-to-add options, Junior can grow up real fast. PC Junior, new from IBM. The PC Junior was one of IBM's biggest failures during the early years of computing. The PC Junior was the successor to IBM's PC, which had been extremely successful in the corporate industry. The PC Junior was designed and aimed to enter the personal computing and household market, getting away from the mostly business market that the PC had excelled and dominated in. Since the PC had helped to transform the commercial market, it was also widely expected that the PC Junior would do the same thing for households. This expectation proved to be grossly overestimated. The overall downfall of the PC Junior was attributed to a few key factors, including compatibility, limited hardware expansion, price, and its almost unusable keyboard. Lasting just over a year from announcement to discontinuation, the failure of IBM's attempt to break into the home computing market through the PC Junior was labeled as one of the biggest flops in all of computing history. The PC Junior was designed slightly differently from its predecessor in order to try to make it more viable in the home computing market. The PC Junior featured two ROM cartridge ports on the front panel in an attempt to make it easier for buyers to install and run their own software on the machine. The PC Junior also allowed for sidecars to be stacked on the side of the computer for additional expansion. It also included two inputs for joysticks which allowed for better gaming. The PC Junior also had multiple video output options to connect to larger monitors and even TVs. It came with a wireless keyboard so customers could use their computers from across the room. The PC Junior also cost less than the original PC, though it was less powerful overall in terms of hardware specifications. Though all these innovations aimed at selling the PC Junior as the best home computer for the money, Many of the features didn't work as expected and turned out to be bigger disadvantages to the product rather than a leg up on the competition. The first of the main design weaknesses of the PC Junior was the issue of compatibility. Most customers thought that because the PC Junior was based off of the original PC, most, if not all, of the software would be compatible between the two systems. They imagined being able to take their files from their computers at work and finish their projects on their home computers with no difficulties, although this was not the case. One of the main issues that kept the PC Junior from being fully compatible was its lack of internal memory. The PC Junior's limited power and built-in memory kept it from running large and complex software. Though the memory could be expanded through sidecars, it was not always recognized with certain programs. As a result, there were many programs that the PC could run, but the PC Junior could not. Not only was the computer incompatible with software, but also with hardware. The PC Junior did not offer a second disk drive, any easy way to expand the memory without additional work, or even a hard drive. IBM hoped that the sidecars would be the answer, but there were not many options available from the start. They were just not being developed quickly enough to be effective. On top of that, the sidecars turned out to be large and awkward. The idea of being able to stack edition after edition next to each other proved to be a better idea on paper than it was in reality. Additionally, sidecars meant more cords, more compatibility issues, and required more space, resulting in nothing but hassle. Though most of the PC Junior's complications explained so far could eventually be overlooked, there was one feature that absolutely could not be. That was the keyboard. The keyboard was wireless and ran off an infrared line of sight laser, the same technology that runs TV remotes. It claimed to be able to work from across the room, but once again the PC Junior fell far below its expectations. Many users found that the keyboard could only be used from no more than a few feet away and in order to work properly, had to be at the correct angle. It ran on two AA batteries, but consumers found that the wired version worked much better because of the extremely quick battery life the keyboard presented. Once the challenge of hooking up the keyboard to the computer was finally accomplished, users were only halfway out of the woods. The chiclet style keyboard, named for the shape of the keys similar to that of a popular gum, proved to be a tremendous hassle to type on. The key's shape, layout, and feel did not allow for ease of typing. Considering that scripts and manual commands ran most all computer programs of the time, 
The keyboard easily was the most important aspect of any computer, and not being able to comfortably type on it was a deal breaker. To make the keyboard more portable and user friendly, IBM dropped a substantial number of keys from the PC Junior's keyboard when compared to the original PCs. This upset many customers as it did not offer the same functionality on their home computers as they had on their computers at work. This is the original keyboard that came with the PC Junior when it was released in 1983 and the big deal was that it used so-called chiclet keys which are these right here and they're very different from normal keyboard keys when I got to pressing on them it, it wasn't exactly what I was expecting um, I heard some people compare it to calculator keys the other thing that really bothers me about this is the fact that there are no markings on the keys themselves <laughs> really after using or well seeing this I can understand the outrage. The problem I'm running into is trying to type. <laughs> I don't, what the heck? Okay. It's it's like the keys are getting stuck on each other almost. It's, you know, when I'm, I'm trying to type fast, uh, my couple, you know, that binky and ring finger, they, they don't work. I don't know. Um, it's hard to press them when you're typing and then this, it's like it, I don't know. It, it's hard really to describe, but it just does not feel right. It doesn't always press down the key when you feel like it should. Like you, you press it down, but it actually only presses, yeah, see like this? <clears throat> I was pressing as hard as I possibly could there because it was slightly at an angle. So if you're, you know, you basically have to do like this in order to press things down. Finally, if all the problems the PC Junior had with its software and hardware didn't draw potential buyers away, the price would. One of the last problems with the IBM PC Junior was that even though it was being aimed at the average homeowner, the cost still seemed to be aimed more towards large companies. It was not as affordable as would be expected and rivaling computing companies had similar computers for much cheaper. The lowest price, most basic PC Junior was still retailing at almost $1,000 roughly double that of comparable computers being offered by Apple, Atari, and Commodore. The huge cost of the computer combined with the competition from rival companies hurt IBM's sales and ultimately helped lead to the failure of the PC Junior. As stated before, the competition for the home computing market was aggressive. The Apple IIc was one of the PC Junior's biggest competitors. This is the new Apple IIc. This is a computer they call Junior. You might think they're similar, but this one can only run this many programs, while the Apple IIc can run this many. The Apple comes with its disk drive built in, so it's much smaller. Even the price is small. Now, which one would you rather take home? The new Apple IIc. In a last-ditch effort to save the PC Junior, IBM replaced the keyboard due to popular demand and lowered the price of the computer in order to compete with Apple's 2C. Finally, the computer was discontinued in March of 1985 when IBM could not make enough profit off its subpar sales. Though the PC Junior had failed, and still to this day, IBM has not made a significant impact on home computing. IBM's failure did inspire other corporations, such as the Tandy Corporation, to try their hand at getting into the home market. Learning from IBM's mistakes, the Tandy Corporation was able to release the Tandy 1000, which was very similar to the PC Junior, but managed to sustain itself in the market much longer than the PC Junior ever did. The design errors of the PC Junior, coupled with the high cost of the lackluster product that did not flow well, ultimately spelled the end of IBM's run in the home computer market, forever being known as one of the biggest disappointments in all of computing history.